Hi everyone. Today I'm going to share with you some tips on how you can succession plant flowers in your vegetable garden for continual bloom all season long and to bring in the pollinators like crazy. Now flowers add such a gorgeous visual appeal to your garden, but they're also very important to bring in the bees, the butterflies, and all the pollinators to pollinate your vegetables so you have tons of veggies in your vegetable garden. With a few tips, you'll be having some beautiful blooms all season long. Because the nasturtiums are coming to an end, it's kind of sad. Today we're actually going to be pulling out the nasturtiums and transforming my cool weather flower garden into a warm weather pollinator paradise and planting some zinnias. But before we do that, I want to show a few other of my favorite cool and warm weather flowers. The reason why you want to plant cool weather and warm weather flowers is because as one crop of flowers is dying out due to the heat, you've got another crop of flowers coming to take its place. So that's what succession planting is all about, having a continual bloom supply and a continual nectar supply for the pollinators. So another one of my cool weather flowers is calendula. These are absolutely beautiful. This particular variety has beautiful yellow and orange blooms, but again, you can see that the stems are kind of starting to brown and die off due to the heat, and they're just kind of starting to look not so great. So soon the calendulas will come out, and we'll be replacing it with some zinnias and other warm weather flowers. But we, we do have some of my favorite warm weather flowers of all time already blooming, and that is the sunflower absolutely a huge pollinator attractor and a beautiful nice sunny flower to have in your garden you're going to absolutely love the visual appeal and the height that it adds to your garden beds a few other cool other flowers that you might want to have in your garden are dianthus and again you can see they're starting to die off from the heat but these actually you can cut way back and they'll come back again next year Alyssum is a beautiful cool weather kind of trailing flower you can plant to trail over your garden beds or your pathways. And there's another one back here, which is one of my very favorites. It's called Forget Me Not. It's such a gorgeous little delicate kind of bluish purple flower. And all these cool season flowers are in my Bring on the Pollinators cool season flower collection. And it's really nice to have different flowers blooming at different times. And then the warm weather flowers like the sunflowers and the zinnias come in to take their place once they die off. The second tip to succession plant flowers in your vegetable garden is to plant a combination of both annuals and perennials. Now zinnias and sunflowers are good examples of annuals that you plant every year, then they die off when the weather gets too cold for them. However, perennials will come back year after year without any effort on your part, adding tons of color splash to your garden and blooming over a long period of time. Some good examples of perennials are right here. Salvia, the hummingbirds were just buzzing around here right before we walked up. The bees are constantly buzzing around a huge pollinator attractor and then chamomile kind of spills over your garden beds it's a beautiful delicate flower and herb and you can make tea out of it and it makes just such a beautiful color splash in your garden now I actually have five flower seed collections over at calicimgardeninghome.com to help you have continuous blooms in your garden all season long. The third tip to succession plant flowers in your garden have continuous blooms is to plant flowers with long bloom times. Now that's exactly what we're gonna do here today. We're gonna transform this into a warm weather flower paradise with some zinnias and some dahlias. Now zinnias have super long bloom times. They're one of those flowers you can plant all summer long. You can plant them from transplants, from seeds, and succession plant or plant seeds every two to three weeks so you have lots of blooms all summer and even into the fall. Get your last look at the nasturtiums. It's time for them to come out. I'm always kind of sad when I pull them out and you can see through a close-up look here how the flowers or the leaves are really starting to die off. The flowers are drying up. Um, there's tons of like dead uh, vines in here. So definitely with the temperatures heating up, it's time to uh, take them out. Now, I don't know if I mentioned that nasturtiums are edible. Every single part of the plant is edible. The leaves, the flowers, even the seeds. And one reason why I love growing nasturtiums so much is because they are so easy to grow and they come back year after year. So here we go, guys. Our first nasturtium pull, and they definitely have a scent to them. You can kind of smell the plants and the flowers. They're kind of a zippy flavor too. They're great on salads. We love the flowers on top of our homemade pizzas. But it's always nice to get a brand new fresh start too. 
Look at all the seeds. This is crazy. So you can collect the seeds to plant again next year, or you can actually pickle them and make capers out of them. So that's kind of fun too. I know, I know, it's hard to pull out things that you love. Also really good to get a fresh new start. The nasturtiums are a great trailing variety. They have dwarf varieties, all kinds of different colors. These are in my Bring on the Pollinators Cool Season Flower Collection. And I also have some red ones in my red flower collection. You can grab any of my seed collections for 20% off with the code FLOWER. And you're gonna get a free purple coneflower seed packet which is a beautiful perennial with your purchase. Now I did already plant some zinnias in here, so I have to remove the nasturtiums very carefully from in between the trellis here, so I don't knock over the zinnias. I got the front mostly cleared out. Now I gotta go into the jungle and clear out the back. I think I'm gonna have to hack my way through here. Here we go. Got the garden bed cleared. I love seeing the red planters in the pathway again. And what I did is I roughed up the soil here, added in some compost, worm castings, organic fertilizer, and now the fun starts, planting the zinnia garden. Now one strategy you can use when you're succession planting is to plant both transplants and seeds, and that's what we're gonna do today. So these zinnias I started from seed indoors several months ago, I've been growing them just for this garden, and we're also gonna plant some seeds along front. So first off, Let's get rolling here on the zinnia transplants. Now these zinnia seeds are in my zinnia seed collection and also in my Bring on the Pollinators warm season collection. This is a salmon queen. And zinnias are such a versatile flower. They're very, very easy to grow and they will bloom all summer, summer long for you as long as you keep the flowers uh, trimmed after they've bloomed. So here I'm just gonna dig up the soil, some holes here for my zinnia transplants. Already got the fertilizer added in, so don't need to do that again. And we're gonna carefully take the transplants out of my little one gallon smart pots where they've been growing. These are the beautiful salmon queen zinnias. They are a beautiful salmon color. Just can't wait for all the blooms to be showing up in the garden. So when you are succession planting flowers, you might have just a bit of a lapse between bloom time. But if you plant it right, you can shorten those gaps and have blooms for most of the summer. Now here we've got some of the Violet Queen zinnias, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and trim off the flowers. Now I know that's really hard to do, but what it does is it helps actually the zinnias bloom more. They will branch off to the side and produce um, more stems and more blooms throughout the summer. So when they're young like this, I'll cut the flowers off so all the energy goes into producing big flowers and big plants. Go ahead and dig these out. And I'm just gonna plant up the back of the garden bed here. And zinnias absolutely love the warm temperatures and they'll thrive in the summer heat. We've got the back of the flower bed planted here with some zinnias that will start growing immediately. I planted the red planters about a month ago with some dahlias and zinnias, so those will start growing nice and tall. So to succession plant, we're gonna plant some seeds here in the front of the garden bed. We're gonna plant them from my zinnia seed collection. Zinnias are an absolutely beautiful flower and come in so many different colors. We're gonna actually plant a combination of the Violet Queen. I'm just gonna pour these right into my hand. And the Salmon Queen, we're gonna mix it up so we have a nice color mixture here. And zinnias are so easy to plant. I'm just gonna sprinkle them over the soil, kind of broadcast them like this. And then just take another handful of soil and just sprinkle it over the top. They're so easy to grow when the temperatures are warm. They grow best in between 70 degrees and 95 plus degrees. 
We've got flowers, seeds that will all bloom at different times and give you a nice continual supply. And did I mention that zinnias are edible? They have a slightly bitter flavor and they're beautiful to garnish beverages and salads. Now we don't want to forget the front of our garden bed here. I love to plant beautiful edging flowers along the front. These are actually a dwarf zinnia called profusion zinnias. They're about one to two feet tall and these I started from seed indoors about six weeks ago and we're just going to pop them in right along the edge of the garden bed. I dig little holes right next to the drip irrigation. I'll pop them next to a drip emitter so they get plenty of moisture and they look absolutely beautiful spilling over the garden bed and these really take the heat and they do not fade. Their color does not fade in the summer heat. Now I'm using my little gardener's supply lifetime mini trowel. This is a free bonus in the June Grow Your Groceries with Cali Kim subscription box. It's the perfect size for getting little seedlings out of your six packs. I'm going to plant these about every six inches along the edge of the garden bed. And it's not too late to grab your June subscription box. You can grab it over at CaliKimGardenAndHome.com and get $7 off with the code SUMMERSALADSTATION and you get this free little trowel as a bonus in the box. Got everything planted here. It's looking really good. I cannot wait for them to bloom. And I'm just gonna give everything a nice little drink here with uh, some Vermistera Vitality and the fish fertilizer to really get things off to a good start. These nutrients in my watering can here are easily absorbed by the plants. So they'll really take off and it'll really help them bloom quickly. I'm very excited to have this garden bed planted. Can't wait for more blooms. It's gonna be so pretty. Now what I want you to do is follow the tips in this video. Succession plant your flowers so you have a continual bloom all season. Bring in the pollinators like crazy, which is gonna help you grow a lot more veggies. Head over to CaliKimGardenAndHome.com. Grab one of my flower seed collections. I've got five of them for you, 20% off with the code FLOWER. It applies to all my seed collections, garden kits, books, and Cali Kim Smart Pots. And you also grab a June subscription box while you're there, $7 off with the code SUMMER SALAD STATION. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.